Hello, my name is Fritz de Mul, and I will discuss now the Laplace and Poisson potential distributions and the Earnshaw theorem. This presentation is part of a series of presentations about electromagnetic topics, as can be seen here. We discuss the electric field equations, especially the Gauss law and the potential gradient law, Laplace and Poisson derivation of the equations, then deal with Laplace and Poisson in one dimension, discuss Earnshaw's theorem to calculate the potential distribution from finite element method, and the Laplace and Poisson equations in two and three dimensions. The electric field equations, the first we need is the Gauss law, is the surface integral over the electric field, the normal component, and that's equal to the total enclosed charge, charge density here, and it is divided by epsilon naught. In differential formulation, we have the divergence of E is rho over epsilon naught. And the divergence is given by the Ex times d dx plus the same for y and z times the field Ex Ex plus the y and the z component. And that ends up as dx dx plus dy dy plus dz dz, and that's the divergence. The potential. We have the int integral formulation Vb potential in B minus that in A is minus the integral from A to B E dl. In differential formulation, the E is minus the gradient of the potential, and the gradient is given by Ex d dx plus Ey d dy plus Ez d dz. And that ends up in Ex times dv dx plus the same for y and z. It's minus Ex e, Ex here. Suppose we have a certain charge distribution here, given by rho in a certain volume, and the electric field will look like this. In the neighborhood of the volume, the electric field will be a bit wobbly, but at larger distances, the electric field will become radial. The same for the surface uh, of the constant potential, that potential surfaces will be not symmetrical close to the volume here, but at larger distances the equipotential planes will be sp spheres. Now the derivation of Laplace and Poisson. We start with Gauss in differential form and the potential in differential form. Now we combine them. We say the divergence of E can be written as, as minus the divergence of the gradient of V. Combination of the two is minus the Laplace operator times V. And that should be equal to rho over epsilon naught. What is the Laplace operator? When you write down the gradient, the, di the divergence of the gradient, then you end up with the divergence here. Ex dx d dx times the gradient is minus Ex dv dx. And if rho is zero, then we talk about free space, that's the Laplace equation, and for rho not equal zero, we talk about materials, and that's the Poisson equation. Ex times Ex is one, and this means that the second derivative of v to x, to y, and to z summed up will be equal to minus rho, the charge density, divided by epsilon naught. This is Laplace Poisson. Some examples. Suppose we only have one dimension, the x dimension. Let's calculate Vx for rho is zero by integration of the Laplace equation. 
So the double differential to x is zero, which means that the single differential is a constant, and the constant will be minus ex. And this means that the potential is a linear function of x plus another constant, c. And this is the graph of that potential. When we have boundary conditions v1 and at x1 and v2 at x2, it ends up with a linear increase of the potential from x1 to x2. And the field will be constant. The field is constant minus c. Because a constant field is a linear com uh, uh, increase of the potential. Again, the one dimension, but now with rho not equal zero. So in materials, we calculate Vx by integration of Poisson's equation. This means that dv dx is a constant minus rho over epsilon naught times x, this one here. And that is th the same as minus the field strength in the x direction. And that double integration, vx is cx minus a half rho over epsilon naught x squared plus another constant cx c prime. And suppose, again, we have those uh, boundary conditions, x1 with v1 and x2 with v2, then you end up with a parabolic behavior. And the e is constant, so a linear increase in e is a quadratic increase in v. Here is the v again, cx is the linear part, and this is the parabolic part, and this is the constant. Assume rho is constant, then and boundary conditions at x1 and x2, met with a special case, x1 and v1 is zero, and at x2 we have a, x2 is a, there is the potential v0, zero and v. Then Calculate Vx and Ex. The V is parabolic. V is parabolic. So, and the E is linear. This is that equation. Let's assume we have boundary conditions here, special, the special boundary conditions. x1 is 0, where potential is 0, and at x2 is a, the potential is v0. And then you end up with something like that. This is the, the e, this is the v, and an, uh, a plot of v over v0. In this direction is x over a, that's this part, and this is rho over epsilon naught. Now, again, the Laplace in one dimension, but then the free space again. We had that boundary conditions here, the same as we had before. Now you can see that the when there are no free charges present, then the potential has no local minima or maxima. Potential is a continuous function without local minima or maxima. And that is the theorem of Earnshaw. The consequences will be that V is a linear function of the position, and at each point V is always in between the v of the neighbor points. And that can be used to calculate the v's. First, 
we had if no free charge present then the potential has no local minima or maxima consequences were v is a linear function of the position and at each point it is always in between the neighbors and now we have a numerical method for calculating the potentials between boundaries start with the zero potential between the boundaries here take the averages between the neighbors like this and repeat that and repeat that and so on and this is Fern Earnshaw's method it's also of course also possible in two dimensions with the potential v is a function of x and y on s what is the potential in s when we know the potential along the borders what is the potential in s again if no free charge present then the potential has no local maxima or minima and this differential equation will depend on the boundaries and it is a partial differential equation but now in three dimensions with boundary conditions v1, v2 and v3 functions of x, y and z here so what is the potential as a function of x, y and z we know the potential in v1, v2 and v3 what will it be in between this is the solution of the Laplace equation and that will depend on boundaries and of course we need a 4D plot for that for x, y and z in three dimensions and the fourth dimension is the v so of course special cases are cylindrical geometry and spherical geometry and that we will discuss now first special case cylindrical geometry this is Laplace in cylindrical coordinates with r, a theta and z if there is a r dependence only and the row and the boundaries will be functions of r and thus the v will be a function of r only let's have an example v is v1 at r is r1 and v2 at r2 and the row is 0 calculate vr now we only have the r dependence here and that will be 0 so we can integrate c and again integrate dv dr is c over r and this means that the potential is logarithmic and with the boundaries the vr is v1 plus v2 minus v1 times the, logarith the log r minus log r1 over log r2 minus log r1 now the special case spherical geometry here is Laplace in spherical coordinates with the r this theta and the phi here times phi is minus rho over epsilon naught when there is r dependence only the rho and the boundaries will be functions of r only and phi will be a function of r only suppose we have again the example that v is v1 at r is r1 and v2 at r2 and the rho is 0 calculate v is vr this is the radial part only this is 0 r is 0 integrate once so dv dr is c over r squared integrate twice then the potential is 1 over r potential 1 over r c and c prime are constants depending on of course the boundary conditions with the boundaries vr is v1 plus v2 minus v1 1 over r min min minus 1 over r1 divided by 1 over r2 minus 1 over r1 and these two examples mm, uh, are the end of this presentation. Thank you very much.